Hi guys! If you're wondering how long candy grapes can last and the best ways to make them, we're gonna find out in this video. I'm testing three reliable methods that you can use, such as the Jolly Rancher grapes from TikTok, the 411 method used for candy apples, and a powdered corn syrup, all while comparing the pros and cons of each so you can decide which path to take and the method that works best for your needs. Today we're discussing the recipes that last the longest, is the easiest to dip, and cracks the least. As you know, candy grapes are a make-and-eat treat, meaning their shelf life isn't known for lasting long. You'll definitely want to watch this video until the end to answer all of your questions about how to make them last as long as possible. This is the perfect refreshing summer treat for your family or small business, so let's create some magic! Let's see what amazing recipe they have at the Lollipop Wood! The first method is going to be the Jolly Rancher method, which means the candy coating is completely made from Jolly Ranchers. This method is for you if boiling a large pot of candy on the stove isn't your cup of tea. Plus, they are delicious and creep flavored. One consideration is that the assortment pack that I have here with the three different flavors is the most cost effective. However, there's a limited amount of each flavor in the package. To start with your grapes, they should be at room temperature. I always twist them off the stalk by gently rotating a few times, twist, 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 to ensure you don't create a large hole or break the skin. To prevent that from happening, just make sure you're not pulling too hard since your toothpick won't fit snugly on the grape. As for the sticks, these are 4 inch toothpicks. They are longer in length than standard toothpicks so that you don't burn yourself when dipping your grapes into hot Jolly Rancher mixture. After inserting the toothpick into the side where the hole is, there may be some juice oozing out. Dry that area off with a paper towel to keep your grapes as dry as possible. Some of these tips and tricks may sound a little obvious, but I promise it all makes a difference in your key to success. And for best results, the grapes you selected should always be firm and not overripe. To achieve the cherry watermelon flavor, I use six of the cherry and three of the watermelon Jolly Ranchers for each batch. Feel free to choose any combination of flavors that you like. I put them inside of these silicone baking cups. I recommend melting up to 9 Jolly Ranchers in each cup. Place the silicone cup onto a small plate so that you don't burn yourself and pop it in the microwave. My melting approach is a bit different. You don't want to microwave this for 30 seconds or you'll end up with a burned gloppy consistency. I start with 15 seconds for the first round and take it out of the microwave to carefully squish the cup around and soften the Jolly Ranchers. Then heat for another interval of 15 seconds. In the beginning, there won't be much melting activity similar to the process of melting chocolate wafers, but don't be tempted to heat it fast. The key is shorter intervals. Bubbling is completely normal as long as the color isn't browned. To continue the melting process, give it a stir with a toothpick, then heat in 3 to 5 second intervals until completely melted. It should be loose and at the ideal dipping consistency. This Jolly Rancher method works even better if you add white gel food coloring. Not only for a more opaque look, I found it also made the Jolly Rancher mixture even more stable and last for a longer amount of time without breaking down. And all you need is to drag a toothpick into the coloring and mix in about two toothpick sized amounts. You definitely don't want to squeeze a drop directly from the bottle for this smaller amount of candy since it will alter the consistency. Before we get dipping, I wanted to show you what happens if you dip into a burnt mixture. This example is the green apple flavor without white coloring. As you can see, I can't even swirl the grape around without getting stuck in the thick mixture, so I have to coat one side and flip it over to coat the other. It's a much more gooey and gloppy consistency, not very ideal for dipping compared to microwaving in those shorter intervals. And here is what the green apple looks like when 
when melted properly. You're able to completely swirl the grape like you would when dipping a candy apple. If you're going for more of a clear glass look, the green apple Jolly Ranchers without white coloring matches that exactly. However, like I mentioned before, the white food coloring in the Jolly Rancher mixture is a game changer since it's so stable. I'll show you how it held up when we put it to the test. Here I'm dipping the grapes into our cherry watermelon mixture by tilting the cup, swirling it in and shaking the excess back into the cup and wiping the bottom onto the side. I don't recommend dipping all the way to the top like I did for some of the grapes, silly me, because the grape actually is more likely to crack when you remove the toothpick. I place my grapes on a silicone mat to prevent sticking or you can also use parchment paper. The number one tip with dipping into the Jolly Rancher mixture is working quickly. Since it doesn't last long, you get about 4 grapes out of this batch without having to reheat it. Once it gets too thick, it doesn't flow and you can't dip anymore. So if you want to get one less grape out of this, it needs to be microwaved in 3 second intervals to bring it back to life. And I would say that's the biggest con about the Jolly Rancher method. After you finish dipping those 4 to 5 grapes, you need to start over by heating a fresh batch with a new melting cup filled with your 9 Jolly Ranchers to dip more grapes, making it more tedious and not practical for completing large orders. This is more if you want to make some around the house for your family, so it's not as much of a shortcut as many may think. Some other cons are that this is definitely more costly and you can't create custom colors or flavors such as cotton candy. It's important to let your candy coated grapes set on the counter for 45 minutes before decorating or freezing so that they aren't warm or the grapes can crack if you freeze them too soon after dipping. And the fun part is sprinkling more candy crystals on top. If you noticed, I didn't do this while the candy was wet. Since the mixture doesn't stay fluid for long, it's better to focus on the dipping part. My favorite way is to crush the Jolly Ranchers up with a mortar and pestle to give them a chunky rock candy look. If you prefer them to be more of a powdery texture, of course you can use a food processor or mallet and bag to crush them up into finer crumbs or a powder. It's all based on what you prefer. Give this a crush 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 until the rock candy is as fine or chunky as you want and pour into a sifter to separate any powder that may be in there and you have these fabulous rock candy crystals. Pour them into a plastic container such as a jelly container that can be tightly sealed. Forgetting to cover the candy will cause it to clump together and get sticky from any humidity. When you aren't using it, definitely keep it covered or you will have a sticky situation. Go ahead and cover your candy with a lid, I can't stress that enough. Now that the grapes have set for 45 minutes, it is time to grab your grapes. I applied the crystals by taking a light amount of water on a brush and spreading wherever I want to cover with my crystals. You can cover the whole grape or halfway like me so the pretty color and shine is still seen. Being sure there is enough water for it to stick on and make it rain with your candy crystals. It looks super neat and clean while allowing them to stick on. Accidentally, I poured the entire amount of crystals into my bowl. I suggest pouring about a third at a time in there instead and keeping the remaining amount sealed up when you're not working with it so it doesn't get clumpy. And be sure to keep the water away from the bowl of crystals more off to the side. You don't want any of that dripping in there. Now let's package the grapes in a hinged clear plastic container. I will link them in the description box below and I'm also going to share some important instructions. Carefully twist and slide your grapes off of the toothpicks and arrange in the containers with these watermelon fruit slice candies. These were from Amazon but some of mine melted during shipping so I suggest trying to find some at your local stores instead. Storing the grapes in the freezer not only helps preserve them, but they taste even better and so refreshing. I dipped these on Thursday, April 21st. The first check-in on the grapes cam was what they looked like 5 hours later in the evening. No signs of melting or cracking at all. 
and a close-up overnight the next morning at 11 a.m. and 24 hours. 24 hours that one grape on the left has some separation. Sorry by the way for all this freezer footage and updates. This is why my videos take a little longer to make, but I like showing you guys all these tests so that you know exactly what to expect. This is now 48 hours at all angles. There's a little bit of breakdown on a couple of them, and not much changed the following days after that actually, except for the one with the most separation broke down more and more. And here's one week later on April 28th, which is amazing since candy grapes are very perishable. It gives you more time to enjoy them without worrying about melting or cracking. The second method we are making is over at Chocolate Mountain. It is called the 411 method. If you are familiar with candy apples, it is the standard recipe proportions you would use for that, except I cut the recipe in half, which works best for the candy grapes. I'll explain why a little later on. With the heat turned off, pour half a cup of water into a deep, heavy bottom pot to ensure the candy mixture doesn't overflow, along with half a cup of light corn syrup. Scrape every last bit of that. And last is two cups of granulated sugar. Then I'm stirring to combine all the ingredients. This is the only time we are stirring this at all, so incorporate everything really well before turning on the heat. And to prevent any crystallization, dip a pastry brush into some water and wipe around the rim where you see any grains of sugar. Later on, they could burn and crystallize on the edge, and we don't want that to fall into the mixture. Clip your candy thermometer to the pot without touching the bottom, and we are all ready to bring this to medium heat. You won't see much happening until it reaches 150. The best way to do this is low and slow without scorching or caramelizing the candy. Then between 150 to 200, it really picks up and the bubbles get a little crazy. All the cloudiness will dissipate and become clear once all the extra liquid has evaporated. And around 225, the temperature will linger there for some time. Don't be tempted to raise the heat more than a notch here or there, or it may rise too fast and go above temperature. Even after removing from the heat, it'll keep going. So just be patient and wait until it reaches 300 Fahrenheit, which is the hard crack stage. Then immediately remove and place the thermometer into a cup of water to get it out of your way and add half a teaspoon of the white gel coloring. When stirring, you never want to use the same utensil that you mix the ingredients with in the beginning if it isn't clean. You could be introducing more crystallization back in there, and it's okay if the candy looks a tiny bit caramelized and not completely clear. However, if it looks too yellow once mixed with the white, you'll know the mixture was caramelized too much. To marvel our candy like the blue ocean waves, the Chef Master Neon Blue is the perfect shade. And for the marble technique, I squeeze just two drops and drag with a long skewer in all directions. It looks like a lot of color, but it will settle out as you tilt the pot like waves crashing on the shore. Some downsides about the 411 recipe is that it thickens up quicker and becomes gluey. As I dip more and more grapes, you might see there's a slight pull on the candy and it isn't as loose. Also, since it's on the thicker side, it doesn't settle out as much when shaking the excess off, so the marble is more like an ombre. And if your candy thickens up and looks something like this, Warm it up on the stove over low heat until it loosens up. The disadvantage is after reheating that one time, especially with the coloring added, you can't really reheat it again. So that's why it's best to prepare half of the recipe, never a full or double batch. These grapes are way smaller than dipping apples, so a full recipe can be wasteful since it might thicken too much before you even get a chance to dip all of them. Remember that the grapes need to set for 45 minutes and these blue raspberry Jolly Ranchers make the most vibrant candy crystals to top them off. I'm wondering if you guys like the rock candy inspired look or the powder look better. Definitely comment what you think down below. If you're a fan of the rock candy, another reason why it works great to apply them this way is it allows you to coat the grape without disturbing the coating while it's wet. 
The crystals are heavy and pointy, which can leave marks if you roll the grapes around in these chunky candy crystals. I coated half of the grapes with the crystals and left the rest plain. To add something sweet to the shark theme, these gummy sharks from Target were too cute. Line the bottom of your container with a small layer of the gummies and arrange your grapes in a big sea of sharks wherever you want them to go. To this mixture, I forgot to add in a flavoring. I'll show you the brands I recommend when we make the cotton candy grapes. The coating on these grapes with the 411 has a slightly thicker shell. I'll show you how it lasted in the freezer. This was a few hours later towards the evening and 24 hours. Then after 48 hours, there's cracks and several of them breaking down, which isn't bad for two days for candy grapes, but not as long as the Jolly Ranchers. Since this mixture was thicker and not as easy to dip, I also experimented with recipes that contained more liquid, such as more corn syrup or water to thin it out. Although it dipped nicely, the grapes expanded and cracked right through the thinner coating within a few hours, so I didn't share that recipe in this video. Video. So what's the compromise here? What magic recipe will be thin enough to dip without cracking the shell? The winning recipe can be found at the Candy Castle. If you didn't know, the Candy Castle is the winning destination in the Candyland game. So let's win the game by giving it one last try with the Miracle Mixture. You won't be needing corn syrup for this. We're using a powdered corn syrup instead. This is the high sweet, high humidity candy from Loran brand. Just like the name, it helps prevent the candy from becoming sticky in humid weather. For the recipe, add one cup of the high sweet to your heavy bottom pot, as well as two cups of granulated sugar. And last is four ounces of warm water. You can find the recipe written directly on the package as well. This mixture is going to seem really thick when you give it a stir. Keep in mind there's usually corn syrup in here, so there's not as much liquid. I scrape any remaining powder on the bottom and sides. It will be a similar consistency to a thick applesauce. And just like with the 411, we're going to clean around the edges with a pastry brush and some water. The high sweet leaves even more sugar on the sides for some reason, so you'll definitely want to clean that. It just takes a little more time. I would say that's the biggest con here. Once the edges are all clean, you'll see the difference. For this mixture, I'm bringing it to medium-low heat instead of medium. The temperature rises much faster since there's less liquid in here, so it's a better idea to keep it lower to prevent any scorching or burning. At least an advantage is it takes less time, right? When everything is boiling, clean around the edges one last time and wait for that 300 degrees. Now it's time to remove from the heat and work with this candy mixture. For the base of colors, mix in half a teaspoon of the White Chef Master. It is going to bubble as you mix in the colors. And my favorite colors to achieve the cotton candy look were this turquoise chef master as the base. It is much different than the neon blue we used for the ocean shade. It's more of a robin's egg blue. All you need is one drop of the turquoise and one drop of neon pink for the marble shade. The consistency of this candy is looser and has a nice shine to it. For the marble technique, dunk in your grape and stay in for a few seconds, then slowly twirl as you come out to achieve a subtle marble swirled look. It is similar to when you dip in marble a chocolate covered strawberry. I look at where I see a spot that I like with the swirls of color and dip directly in that spot. The looser consistency of this is great for marbling without being too thick to shake it down while still holding on to the look of the swirl. By the way, I forgot to record me adding in the cotton candy flavoring when I mixed in the coloring. It's Loran brand cotton candy, same brand as the high sweet powdered corn syrup. You can add it in right after mixing in the white coloring. 
I showed myself dipping a lot of these without editing them out because I wanted to emphasize how you get a lot of grapes out of this mixture since it is so easy to work with and a great consistency. You don't have to worry about it getting thick and having to reheat it. And that one drop of pink stays in there pretty well, but if you find your swirls are more subtle than you like, you can add another drop in and remarble with your skewer. Most of these I dip with swirls, but if you want a solid blue color, look for a spot that is mostly blue. You could definitely get some solid grapes out of this pot too. The last tip of mine is to shake the excess off and wipe the bottom of the grape onto the side of the pot. That will prevent any thick pool from forming underneath the grape when you place it onto your mat. The high sweet, high humidity candy was from Amazon. The only downside is that it's a product that you can't find everywhere, so it's not readily available, but it's definitely well worth it to order. These really remind me of mini cotton candies on a stick. Remember to always let your grapes set for 45 minutes and we are all set to decorate. Instead of topping with rock candy, this cotton candy sanding sugar actually tastes and smells like cotton candy. If you have seen it in my other videos, I have it in my Amazon store. You can also use it on strawberries and apples. The sanding sugar is even easier to sprinkle on the grape than the rock candy since it is less sticky and more fine. Of course, I had to pair the grapes with a fluffy layer of cotton candy. I showed putting it in the freezer because I wanted wanted to take pictures for you guys, but if you are planning on doing this, store the grapes in a separate plastic container inside the freezer and arrange on the cotton candy right before serving or giving to the customer. The cotton candy kind of melts down in the freezer, but putting any of the gummy candies like the fruit slices, sour worms, or the sharks in there is completely fine. What you'll really like about the high sweet is that it is less sticky than normal and has a glossy finish. And this was the grapes after four days. They did expand, but nothing cracked through. I didn't get a chance to record beyond the four days because I didn't want to hold up posting the video. But overall, the High Sweet is such a great product that you should try, especially if you're interested in selling candy grapes. I hope you guys enjoyed cracking the code on these grapes and you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.